do I know that they go in their security at Coachella with all those big guys? Yeah, that's likely I'm going to end up in a little bit of security for however long this is going to last. I'm gonna, I mean, I couldn't stay away from it because now I'm going to have to apply for a job and it's going to be a security company. I'm going to get a guard card this week and the whole thing's going to go through. And well, it's good because Ed was sent, wanted me to get a guard card so I can work for him now again and get paid more money. Have you heard about his odyssey on his bike? Arizona. Mm-hmm. A little bit. The hottest place on earth. I, it was pretty warm too the days I went. Like, India. That the cool. second best. You know now this it's like 110 degrees on the top of the street today. But how do you stand being around a bunch of Republicans like? <laughs> they just don't talk politics. Well, it's that in the desert heat. That, that's why I don't want to go to Arizona. Like. Heat is heat. Yeah, and Republicans are Republicans. Just well, the, the combination of the two yeah. is what kills them. Like, no. There's oh. Democrats in Orange County. It's not even clear what a Republican is anymore. Well, man, I love talking politics, but can we skip it today? <laughs> I mean, yeah. I do, but... I'm not doing I, think I don't know if I have anything better to like offer, but... Three months of the year. You need to go. I think Europe we're still waiting for a main yeah. topic. Yeah, 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 I agree with you. Hello, somebody. Eldar. Morning. You're back in the United States. So I hey, picked man. that. Hey. I think that's Fesser. Fieser? Yeah. I picked that up and I've looked about halfway into the first chapter. <laughs> You're still because we got a bunch of stars okay. online for. Well, two different states, yeah. Outlining I mean, we've been in, a dual in an easy way for people who. Going to Canada and living there. Don't have. Uh, exposure to philosophy That's necessarily. Problem, really, but I'm pretty used to it. Um, yeah. you all the pros and yeah. con arguments historically for and against the material. It's your brother's birthday today, huh? It's my brother's birthday. And I have to He's say that the first chapter that I'm into is, is a fairly clear outline of, I'm sure they're all academic arguments, but <laughs> really nice stuff. Oh, philosophy of mind. Yeah, so, and apparently there's a <coughs> sub-specialty of academic philosophy called philosophy of mind, right? <laughs> it has a promising, uh, a promising title, right? Yes. But then where does but it there's stop? no mind in here. Oh, darn it. <laughs> or no philosophy mind in there. either. No philosophy either. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> We should say academic philosophy. Yeah, they got another subdivision called philosophy of language. Oh. Mm. Big one that must be about the logos. That's what I was thinking. We'd, we'd hope, <laughs> right? We it as you would hope. <laughs> somehow, somehow they make it not. <laughs> Moving into the Parmenides, is materialism, you know, this is really what I fight in my university, and, and what's really been interesting is um, being in the Parmenides group and listening to you and thinking a little bit about it, um, has given me a way to listen, to ask questions and listen in a certain way when people are talking to me at lunch or at work. And it has become apparent to me that while the outside culture, you've, you've argued, Pierre, is largely relativist, mm -hmm. yet my world at the university is largely um, various forms of materialist. And this is not just uh, one or two of the philosophy departments. And it's not just, I mean, it, and it's not just the cog sci professors in my building and so forth. It's the staff. And I'd say to myself, wow, when I go to lunch with these people and we get into some questions like this, it's clear, you know, like, hey, you know, we just push up daisies when we're done and that's it, baby, you know, and we're all just mechanical, really, when it comes down to it. Um, it's okay. And I say to myself, that's why they're working here. But they don't, perhaps they don't realize, or maybe that's why I was working here. I came from a materialist family. So even as a staff person, you're going to support and get along well with your professor because you think the same way they do. The whole, the whole community is a materialist, all the way down to the secretary. 
Janitors too. Janitors. <laughs> but it's it's a really tough one. It's a tough nut to crack. I don't. Uh, Well, why don't you just tell us the difficulty you have in cracking? <laughs> um, how do you can? I don't think it's my job anymore to convince, but I anybody. I, I'm. I think what I'm trying to do is convince myself. But I. I there's no question. I. I feel that, or I think that I can ask of a materialist that I'm gonna leave them with a puzzle or a contradiction about their own. Um, and I guess that's why I started reason, reading Feaser. Yeah. That was fun. <laughs> Did you take a little scoop? No, oh. it's wet. Oh, it was yeah, wet. Too. And there's no no use crying over <laughs> wet jeans. No, wet 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 wet. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, go, and, and now that we... Go ahead. So, uh, uh, one of the things that I, reasons I was looking at Fieser was to say, well, I wonder if he presents all the pro and con arguments. I really don't want to get into a debate with somebody, but I wonder if that would help me knowing that um, to ask them a question um, that might, or ask myself a question that leads me to a quandary or a puzzle about it. Oh yeah, that's true, if I think that way, right? That's kind of the reason why I got into Fieser, was to, to, to uh, see if I could take those conversations a little bit further. By the way, did you answer the question I posed? It requires me to remember what you even asked. That's good. I uh, think it's the first start, right? Was it <laughs> a question about what is your difficulty with cracking the nut? Yeah. Oh, I guess I did not. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, that's the question I'd like to know. <clears throat> that's right. What is my difficulty with cracking that nut? Yeah. See, I mean, uh, I presume, uh, Someone has to know what they mean by materialism. <coughs> but what kind of claim are they making when they're making a claim for materialism? I bet it has nothing to do with material. Hmm. Well, and I've I've looked at a couple different philosophy dictionary definitions of it and spent some time on Wikipedia, and then I got into this book. Um, even he admits that it's not entirely clear because there are problems, however you define it. Um, what, is that, no, 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 no. what does that mean if that's true so far? <clears throat> well, it would mean that it would... Um, It would mean that from the, the very get-go, if you can't even define what it is you're talking about in a way that's solid, um, solid, or you know at least doesn't have problems or self-contradictions from the very beginning, then um, it, it would be a difficult position to defend. Well, or no, to no, no, no. Not that it's difficult. It means it doesn't. They don't have one. <laughs> and, and and it better be solid if it's material well, that would be the word right? hmm. Um. <clears throat> right well and we know you know it, it basically is anything you can wrap your knuckles on anything that involves matter matter is the only reality uh, but we know the problems with that you know as soon as you get down to uh, certain sizes, certain very small sizes, you know, uh, you have problems. Um, you mean, also, there's also the issue with... Uh, you mean the materialism 
It's gone. It's gone at that point. You can't you can't go any further, but they're not willing to really admit that. No, 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 no. They all admit that. They what? Oh, admit that. Right? They all admit. Yeah. What is it that they don't no, care? No, I, I don't know that they don't admit that. I mean, uh, when I say they don't admit that, I'm talking about friends that I sit with on on Wednesdays, uh, empiricists. Uh, they admit quantum physics has introduced a new ball game, but they will not. What they will not admit is that it calls into question their own research. They think they can go on in the same way. That's what I mean by not admitting. It doesn't influence their um, their empiricist, naturalist, positivist you know, position. They would if they got paid for it, got paid without worrying about what they're going to produce. <laughs> That's why we need to restructure our society, right? <laughs> well, maybe they're not uh, just materialists. Like, if they can just admit that and move on, then maybe there's something... Uh, more fundamental that they're holding on to. <coughs> I think Todd Clark would bring in as a set off to materialism, physicalism, because of the discoveries. Because you mentioned like they believe that all we do is push up daisies when we kick the bucket, right? So you don't have to believe that there's something definite called matter to believe that. You can allow that it's energy, just that energy will be pushing up daisies when you die. So you at least believe in the body, physicalness. It's not that deep, but... <laughs> is, that, is that... What's that? Is that Newtonian? Is that the mechanical... Is that what you mean? Yeah, we, he's brought up positivism, empiricism, right? Let's throw these all into the same. These are all different the flavors. Same. They all take yeah, different... Some allow, you know, some Mechan allow for energy, and, and that's fine, too. They'll, they'll go that far. It doesn't have to just be physical matter. Um, there are different... It's a class of what they're willing allow, to allow or not allow. But, In what sense do you mean Newtonian? Well, I was trying to understand the mechanical nature of, like, because you were trying to bridge between materialism and physicalism, and yeah, I was thinking be a, that a more apt term. Yeah, and then I was thinking that like Newtonian physics, this process of just mechanical operation, would be in tune with yeah, physicalism. Gotcha. Yeah, but, you know, like the guys that I sit with will say things like, um, well, you know, the universe is just a giant um, clock. It's, an, it's, it's just an incredibly complex machine. That's new. Right? And, but even if, yeah, right? But even if you get into um, some of the more interesting questions that quantum physics gets into... Um, they don't give up that idea. Like a clock but without a maker, right? Without a maker, yeah. Right. It is, and I oh, guess you're talking about God now. My wife's a, you know, a, a right, fire and brimstone. I mean, you know, last must time be I checked, you... clocks just appear out of nowhere. <coughs> and so, like, the, the question really they don't is... Wanna, I've, I've brought that up with them. They don't want to go there. Yeah, I mean, so they have a, a war against the mind. You got it. But you see that. You know, I think that uh, that they're really not mature. <coughs> <laughs> okay. Even on the subatomic world, what they really believe in is Descartes. Descartes. In what way? What? Descartes. Descartes. They're essentially Descartes. been influenced by Descartes. Rene so Descartes. That's the only basis for modern science, not materialism. <coughs> Descartes said, hey, of all the qualities you want to talk about, forget them. There's only one. Ex 
extension. You can reduce everything to properties of extension. It's extension that can be studied, not materialism. Extension. Yeah. In other words, yeah, what is that when these guys send up a one of those great hydrogen balloons at 200,000 feet up in the air, uh, or subatomic world, what are they looking at? What is it that they have concretely that they're pointing to that it's a result of whatever kinds of experimentation they're doing? Scratches. Are you talking about like torturing nature? No, oh. what are they looking at? Uh, uh, it's CERN. Right. Uh, what do they have at the, at the, at the, at the end of their experiment? <laughs> I don't know. I don't follow particle physics. No, no, no. no, no. But they have, they have to have some kind of evidence of something being there. That must be some kind of scratch on some surface. If they send a balloon up to the heavens, right? they want to study cosmic rays. They don't. They don't discover cosmic rays. They study scratches left on a photographic plate. Is he when they talk about supersymmetry, they don't know what the hell they're talking about. What they have is some kind of evidence of geometrical patterns. Those are lines. Those are lines. That's extension. They're saying, how can these scratches be here? And what do these scratches indicate? <laughs> hey, when they smash a subatomic particle, mm -hmm. they don't they don't see a smashing subatomic particle. What they have is the debris from some crash that's represented by something in a physical form that are scratches on something sensitive enough to, to be able to capture the particular phenomena that's going on. Are, are you saying that they're just studying effects, but not cause? Absolutely. No, no. Special kind of effects that has to be reduced to extend. When scientists just get, make a study of color, there are no colors. They want to study sound. There are no sounds. They don't study sounds. They reduce it to frequencies. What's a frequency? A line. It's all, they're all studying tracings yeah. that fundamentally are Cartesian properties. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> but when they do that, that is, I'll agree. But when they do that, they try to um, extrapolate that. Uh, they would not call them laws, but they like to call them patterns. Of course. Because laws makes them uncomfortable. <laughs> For, I think, no, some obvious Because reasons. the only thing they have are scratches. Right, but they want to find patterns in those scratches, right? So they can manipulate, and that gets into technology and right, uh, pragmatism. Um, so we could call it scratchism. Scratchism. Yeah, scratchism. <laughs> or taking That's out Descartes. the trash. That's Descartes. Or lineism. Or lineism. Oh. Or, or studying the footprints. The tracing. Footprints. No, that's uh, that's just. Well, out, yeah, okay. Out, yeah, okay, footprints. But they've never seen the foot. No, it's the footprints. Yeah. It's the prints of the foot. Yeah. 
<laughs> how would how would big hearts? Well, how would the study of scratches or extension? How is that a philosophy? How does it become a philosophy? Or how is it a philosophy? You you said this is they're not materialists they're Cartesians scratches. Mm -hmm. Oh, scratchists, right? Scratchers. Um, well, I guess I have two questions there. Uh, is a scratchist a philosophical position? A and B. How does that differ from materialism? Well, it's incomplete. Yeah, it seems. Right. So in his meditations, the difference between his meditations and his discourse on method is now he has to say to himself. Uh, how do I know there's something scratching the scratch or producing the scratch? Yeah. All I got is scratches or properties of extension. So it comes up with a great solution, which, which uh, <laughs> I try to urge people to believe. Yeah. What's that here? Well, I mean, it must be true because God would not deceive me. Oh, yeah. mm. Well, that's when he moved into philosophy. See, <laughs> that's the step. And being a good Catholic, yeah. I mean, you know, he was, he was right. He's a good Catholic. Right. Beliefology. And also, he was. Pretty sure he wanted to stay a little safe from the Catholic Church and his search for victims. So, uh, whether or not that's possible as a motive. Mm. Mm. <laughs> yeah. See, from physical evidence, <coughs> there isn't any. Uh, How do you argue? Well, there are causes. scratches. Yeah, there's only argue effects, argue no causes. Now a whole volume of, of analysis proceeds well, right? but, no, but what they under do, what conditions that yeah. that scratch was made. Uh, <laughs> they, they, but they view. That, they no, that's, called, <laughs> that's called by some thinkers that there is only a minuscule amount, a tiny amount of physical data. Then, in order to make that intelligible, there volumes and volumes of how to understand that in terms of other properties of extension from algebra, mathematics. You, know, you now must add a whole bunch of things which we presume are true. So those are often called danda, D-A-N-D-A. -A. That they then come in with and then try use it to understand whatever it is is the primary data. But what is the primary data always in every case? Scratches. Scratches. <laughs> wow. We just need more scratches. That's why I say scratches. We just need more scratches. So, you know. They're, they're, they are mature. No, they're not. See, it gives them, it gives them, it gives them the sense that there must be something there that must have produced the scratches. That's the extent of their materialism. It's a belief that behind the scratches there must be something. Well, that no scratch scratches itself. No, but that's a standard. No, but they call the Delphic Oracle. No, but this is you know, it's, no, but this is for them. It's oh, all no, it's, it's all dominoes. Uh, yeah. One scratch creates another scratch, creates another scratch. They're just studying chains of. of so for them, each as far as they want to think about it, every effect is. If you want to talk about a cause, they only talk about a cause as right as you well know at the at the level of the previous effect. So for them. All the scratches are just previous scratches to the next subsequent scratch. It's all just 
chain, of chains of, of, of these things. So, they yeah, but they're looking for the prime scratcher. No, no, they're not. <laughs> well, they yeah. really, oh yeah, they're saying, they're yeah. the primary scratch. What's the primary scratch? Scratcher. Right. Scratcher. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the first scratcher. So. No. Well, that, that's what they're I, denying, right? That's different. the problem. Is I, I, I really think oh. that when I'm, when I'm talking with these guys, I <laughs> say, hey, what are you looking for? And what's, are you going to give any, are you going to grant any reality to the so-called patterns you find, or the laws that you find, any power to those? Are you going to grant any power of these? And, and if so, where do those <laughs> things exist? <coughs> um, they finally admit, okay, it must have an existence and a power of itself that's not physical. So they've stepped out of that materialism at that point. But in essence, what they really like is to just talk about these chains of things. And they really don't, or they're in denial about the fact that they're, what they're really looking for is, is the original. They just want to say, oh, I found the next previous scratch. But I only because you can use that scratch, it's reliable. Yes. Yeah, it's got to be reliable. It's got to be reliable. Yeah. Right. Because then they can use it for other things. And the reason they're in science is not because they love science, it's because it produces technological developments which gain them status and prestige. If it didn't have that correspondence into technology, these guys wouldn't be in science. <laughs> it's a connection between science and technology that gives the power of science, not science by itself. Well, science by itself <coughs> would quickly become philosophy. Well, no, it would not, not because properties of extension are, are only secondary phenomena, not worthy of reflection. <laughs> And that's why you're saying they wouldn't be interested. Yeah. I guess I'm just saying the flip side of it is uh, anybody who was left interested would, would want to go further. No. Would you agree the people in science are into science not because they love science, it's because they see it as part of a technological developmental system? I see that in my guys. Yeah, that's, right. that's it. That's I mean, that, without that, they yeah. wouldn't be there. Yep. Yeah, so yeah. they're technocrats. Technophiles. Technophiles, yeah, right. What is a technology? And uh, and they're pragmatists. Yeah. Right? They're pragmatists. Because because of that belief that whatever they discover will be able to be transformed into some technological change which will then benefit themselves or other people who produce things on the result of those discoveries. So. Right, but particularly the benefit, prestige. Yeah. Which means they're into the scratch, I scratch your back, you scratch mine. Yeah, well. <laughs> World. Speaking of scratches. <laughs> <laughs> well, right? No pun intended. <laughs> pun intended. Pun <laughs> intended. So, but I have a question. How about this scratchism, lineism, Cartesian reflection? Has it helped you to answer your question? Because I noticed you can continue to talk about the process they go through. But it doesn't sound like you're concluding Good about question. how to help them while you're talking about their process. <coughs> well, we're talking about what his vested interest is in this question. Like, what is it helping you with surface some question you have? Why would I be interested in this phone call? Same thought. Oh. Why is it that the seekers for more scratches mm -hmm. have an interest in computerization and systems of artificial language both come on, including Lisp? Including Lisp. Um, what, what does that allow them to do? What does Lisp allow? Lisp. Um, Let's separate that question out because I don't think they're interested in Lisp. Mm. Um, they who? 
the, guy, the guys we've been talking okay. about. Um, if they have an interest, I mean, that's, they're two separate <coughs> questions. If they have an interest in computers, I think it comes out of two areas. One is, is clearly because computers enable them to study the scratches. Um, so it's a useful tool. And A and B, computers themselves are kind of an interesting clock. And so for them, it kind of just proves, it kind of, you know, in an odd way, it just sort of proves their position even more in a very pragmatic way. See, we made this great tool. It's a, it's a bunch of... Uh, deterministic, right? And it, it's useful, it's pragmatic, I can... So that's their interest in it. Uh, uh, those that get a little bit more interested go for algorithms. Okay. Uh, and that's called computer science. Yeah. So you spend all your time not using it to study things, but looking at how you can make algorithms themselves more efficient. Um, and an algorithm is? <coughs> Come on, one more step. Um, paradigm. It's a paradigm? Well, go ahead. What well, that's not a word I don't put on it. But since you used that word, I'd love to hear what you... <laughs> no, come on. Uh, what, what is it? What <laughs> I wasn't going to do it justice. Um, I was just going <coughs> to say an algorithm is a recipe. It's a... Recipe. It's a, it's that, a, that is self-contained. Yeah. Self-contained. It's neat. It's clean. has a beauty to it. Is that a paradigm? It represents, because it, it works, it represents right? properties. Of yeah. right. And therefore, you look like for that. something that you're studying that has a certain set of properties that could easily be utilized algorithmically. Hmm. <coughs> That's a paradigm. It's a paradigm. Hmm. I guess I don't follow. It's a system of thought, self-contained <laughs> system of thought. It can exist independently by itself. It has its own consistent rules. It can be applied to cases similar to itself. Paradigm. Okay. Hi. Right, by the way, do you think well, of this? By the way, do you think that if the whole universe, all of the universe, if the totality of everything were to collapse, do you think there is a possibility that? the same thing can reoccur. Like another universe come yeah. up? <laughs> that must mean then there's a grand algorithm of the universe, <laughs> and therefore if the physical universe were to disappear, potentially it's there for another universe. Because, well, are you using algorithms in the sense of laws? That's what you do. <laughs> so you bypass the word law and you're just Well, because I don't patterns, see them as... Patterns. I, yeah, I don't use an algorithm as equivalent with law. I would say that an algorithm is a... Is a is, utilizes laws. Utilized as laws? No, utilize an algorithm. You know, like if you say. Oh, um, utilizes laws. Yeah. Um, but an algorithm, maybe I. What's the definition of an algorithm? <laughs> Good question. Um, I'm trying to think if I can give an example. Where's Robin Russell? You want to help me out, fellow bud? Come <laughs> <Yeah, laughs> on, come on, let's get him. Get him. He's hiding. Yeah. <laughs> Not, not necessarily uh, a loop intuitive. Uh, I mean, sometimes they're counterintuitive, but they're pragmatic. There's this no, solution. Like, like yeah, <laughs> so, so you have to try to describe what it is that's pragmatic for a moment yeah, because uh, pragmatic is something that works rather than something that's right or correct. Hmm. So the, 
But how does that fulfill the, the idea of what an algorithm is? Uh, it, it works uh, rather than conforming to some ideal uh, correctness or... Wait a minute, isn't, isn't it an ideal? Yes, in a, yes, it would be, so, it, but not in, not in the, maybe indirectly, I guess. Um, it's not, it's just, man-made. Just to, are man-made. For the definition of self-contained step-by-step yep. set of operations to be performed. Yeah, that's, that's correct. Yeah, yeah it could that's be. That's algorithm. algorithm. It could be an al algorithm to, to washing the floor. You know. oh, yeah. Well, that's why I call it a recipe. Right? So yes. it's what it is, therefore, it's an idea. Yes, an idea. Classified by two. Oh, wait. Uh, therefore, it, is it likely then that there's an algorithm for the entire universe? So therefore, if this one were to collapse, potentially it could be re reappear, since the pattern exists independently of creation. That's and very interesting. And so now, there's the, a standing the, question on the, the word floor. algorithm <laughs> is going to be synonymous with law be, and paradigm. Sorry, sorry, guys. Law and paradigm. Uh, law, pattern. And paradigm. These all, I believe these are all the things that we're talking about. Yeah, but his question. But a, I'd say a, a, a paradigm <laughs> answers the question how. You know, it's the question how that a paradigm. I mean, an algorithm. Would answer. Right. It's and it's back back anything. to where Pierre brought it, the paradigm of the pa algorithm of the universe, right? right. That can restart I, the universe if it were to collapse. What are we doing with that one? I would add oh, that. Oh, why did Pierre bring that up? He didn't want to use <laughs> the word law with algorithm. So I originally was trying to figure out what does algorithm definition mean? And it seems like that <clears throat> paradigm and law are now being synonymous with algorithm. But you didn't want to make that step. You didn't want to say an algorithm was a law. No, I wanted to say that it. No, I guess maybe, I mean, just because for me. The reason I got out paper is to like to give an example, you know, like these <laughs> opening mine open <coughs> society. But like the you know, that's just your oh, the old man, screen from man. Julie's videos. Uh, oh oh mine. Yours. <laughs> but um that's just scrap paper. Yeah, he wanted to use it. I was gonna use it to draw. <laughs> like but, an know, algorithm. Like, like and here's an algorithm. Like um, getting computers to play chess games, right? Um and Deep Blue and all that IBM stuff that they did years ago to, to play uh, the, the top chess players. So you start out on a chess board and it's one position. And that position is this dot. And that is all those, those pieces on both sides in two rows in particular positions, right? That's position one. Oh, yeah. And like a guy a moves a pawn, right? He, he pushes his pawn <coughs> out here. And that, that takes us to this position. That's a, like a state, right? The board is in this state, now it's in this state, which is the same as this state with one pawn moved, right? And then the other guy goes, well, I'd like to move out a, a knight. So that, that takes you to this state of the board, right? But instead of moving that first pawn, he could have moved, uh, maybe uh, he could have bumped his bishop out. No, you can't do that with it. He could have put the pawn in, in a, he could have moved his knight so that he could have, so from the, the start, game, the first player could have taken this pawn out or he could have taken his knight out, right? And each one of these things leads to several other contingencies which lead to others and several other, and it starts to explode, right? right? So what you get a computer to do is you write a loop, which is, uh, you say, go through all the possibilities at this top level. Then at the secondary level, go through all those possibilities one by one. Then at the, each of those go through those possibilities, right? And go down as deep as you can until you get to a final thing where somebody's won. And then kind of recurse back up, which is what Lisp is good at. Then roll yourself back <coughs> up uh, to, so this one's already, this one we, we got to, so, you know, person A won. So then roll yourself back up the tree, this is called a tree, upside down. And then go down this way as far as you get until you get to a solution. Oh, in that case, person, you know, A won this game. B won, and these are all games at the bottom, right? Well, this is going to be, I don't know, millions or billions of possibilities to get to the bottom, right? But the way to explore that whole tree through a, I guess I'm describing it as what they call a depth first search. You go down to the deepest one, you pop out, or that operation of going through all those steps and then until you get to all games possible 
and, and then you recurse back up to the top until you arrive from the very final game over here, <laughs> and you pop back up. Okay, now you have all games possible in chess. Now, the person sitting across from you is a human. And they take one of these, you know, initial moves. And you're the computer, right? You have figured out all the possible games that can be done in chess. But this, you know, Bobby Splansky or whatever, who the chess master is across from you, takes that move. That isolates out all these other possibilities. You don't have to play those games. You only have to go down this tree. And every move that this other person takes, you only have to take... Yeah, the, the it narrows moment. down the possibilities. So the computer has already already has all the games. That operation of going down through, up, down, up, down, up, down through is an example of an algorithm. It's a recipe for finding all the games in chess. Does an so that's why I'm saying that's not a law, but it uses laws. Does an algorithm presuppose analogy? <laughs> um, yeah, analogy. Yes or no? Stop it! Let me think. <laughs> Jeez. Well, you got two things to think about. <laughs> and you're on the timetable, according yeah. to Mark. Every application <laughs> of an algorithm oh, I didn't want to get presupposes <laughs> an <laughs> analogical universe. So you're answering the question every algorithm presupposes an analogical universe. That's true. Are you not saying, with the use of algorithms, that the, any particular algorithm must be like that to which you are applying it? Yes, thank you. Therefore, it presupposes a correspondent system between algorithms and the universe that you're studying. Yes. Therefore, yes. the very nature of algorithms presupposes an analogical structure of the universe. And even in the description that you gave. Right? Quite so. So you're in analogy. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah, and also so people like your people doing work such as you both are doing. You're not dealing with materialists. You're dealing with ideas and analogical systems. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I like going there, but when I take that to my buddies on a Wednesday afternoon, you know, their responses are very interesting. Uh, the guy that I like the most, the ninth, he's your age, I still want you to meet him, or him to meet you really. Um, <clears throat> whenever we get into that aspect, what, you're re what you guys are really dealing with are ideas, principles, laws. He says, wow, we had a great talk today. That was awesome. <laughs> but paradoxically, does not want to admit your reflections to admit yeah. that you're in a world of ideas, principally analogical systems. I've told him, I said, look, you know, you're not giving yourself enough credit. Pardon? I said, you're not giving yourself enough credit. You say you're playing with data. You're not playing with data. I've said the same thing to him. You're working with ideas. You're finding principles. You're, you're gonna, yeah, that's what you're really doing. You're collecting the data. To, yeah, this was all your idea, Pierre, right? You, hey, it took 1% of your time to collect that data. The next seven years, you're working on it. What are you doing during those next seven years? <laughs> he loves it, right? Ah, oh, so true. But... <laughs> Say, uh, uh, someone likes to admit, what am I really doing? Uh, uh, As Kevin said, it's a denial of the mind, right? 
Is this Parmenides thing you're into also a structure of analogies? <coughs> By the way, the structure analogies presuppose a logos. Well, that's a harder one for me because um, I've never quite pinned down what we mean by logos. Ah. You've already given us every good part of it. Like, how is it possible that they are algorithms? <laughs> how is it possible that they are? Yeah. What is the algorithm? condition necessary for an algorithm? That it presupposes analogy. Yeah. Um, uh, and you mentioned order and patterns. Order, Did patterns, you laws. There's no way that any of them could operate without. And, and as you look upon it, it also has an aesthetic quality and beauty, coherence, balance, harmony, higher degrees of order, divisions of acute nature. Is that right? Yes. Ah. And you put all of those things together. Uh, in what system is it that they're likely to be discussed? In what system is it that they are likely to be discussed? Certainly not auto mechanics. It must be a system of ideas, must it not? Yeah. Pure ideas. That fit together into a supreme rational order. Boy, that word rational. We're, we're pushing that edge. <laughs> you, are, you are messing with it, baby. <laughs> What do you mean? It, that's not a good way of summing that up. Word, that word, I love rational. Everybody around this group loves that word, but I'm thinking of my, my men sitting across from me over a glass of wine on a Wednesday, and they're going to go, whoa, 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 rational? But, hey, uh-uh. Say, look here. Is it's it just a clock, baby. Hey, we may <laughs> fall into another dark age, right? It looks like we're right? already slipping in. We're all learning is wiped out. Is it equally possible Hello, that if anybody survives and recreates a system, yep. they're going to recreate algorithms? They're, they're still there. Right? Yep. They're going to re recreate everything again. The eternal algorithm. Why is that possible? What? Eternal. What? They're no. eternal. Or the laws that they're based on are eternal. Because there must be something independent that maintains it, independent of its appearance in various forms in various universes. I don't guess. Planets. Then it has an eternal quality. You know, uh, we got very close to this one time, and I, I really missed my opportunity. They said, well, there could be another universe, kind of a similar question, right? There could be another universe that operates with a whole other separate of law, or a separate series of laws. And I didn't say anything. We were finishing up anyway, I guess, was my excuse. But I only thought about it later. I thought, okay, well, fine. Even if you're going to hypothesize two separate universes that work with completely different sets of laws, because that was their answer. Well, we're just finding patterns, and we're, we're, we're the ones putting names on those patterns. You know, they don't like to admit that Saturn existed before humans. But, okay, we put words on this on these things. We find patterns, but maybe those laws are completely different in another universe. And I, I should have said to them, fine, but if you have two universes that you want to think about that way, the two of those universes have to exist somewhere under some other overarching thing that allows both of those to exist. Oh, by the way, we did not universes. follow that certain universe. So you wouldn't call them universes, all, right? Would you agree that certain kinds of universes would have a short and a long life? 
Half-Life. <laughs> and life Um, I don't know where you're going with that. Just show up. <laughs> yeah, right. No, I'm trying to, I'm trying to play. No, no, no. You're Just wait for that. The possibility that some of the other universes. I said, of course it could be. By the way, is it likely that some would last longer than others? Yes. Oh, those that only last uh, the briefest period of time, there must be something about them that brings about their collapse. Yes. Oh, then among all possible universes, there may be some that have a certain persistence, a certain quality over time that allows them to ensure their continuation. Oh, then it must therefore follow a certain order of the universe. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Which universe? <laughs> There's a general universe. And, and Jeff, cosmic <laughs> algorithm. Jeff, <laughs> even in your, um, even in their rebuttal that you mentioned, yes, you said. It, two different universes and they conform to a completely different set of laws but yes. at least Here, the idea of law crosses both the of idea those. of law right so they're not and they call them a universe for a reason that's another, so that's another connection right you'd they have, have to be dual verses or something so you'd have to see what is it that would say that they could end up saying they're universes is there something common, some principle they're following to end up saying they're right, universe? Right. What is what is common across them? Mm -hmm. That's yeah. A, yeah, the, both of those could be good points. Um, you guys want to come on Wednesdays and another, help me out? <laughs> just no. another. Um, <laughs> no, but you no, should bring them here. Yeah. yeah, please. Just another like, way of looking at it. Another insight is right that, there. like Thank you me. said a moment ago, his objection. You went like uh, you, you, his objection, according to you, was something like, "Hey man, it's just a clock, like this, just a, yeah. this. I don't know if you want to call it the philosophy of justa, like, uh, yeah, merely the philosophy of justa. Like it's a, what is that? It's um, reductionism, right? Like it's just a clock. And then, so it's like on one level, you have to deal with him in terms of his own pathologos of doing justa and not even so much of his actual conclusion because it's like within that within that whole thing is his whole viewpoint of the world right like, hey it's justa you know you can put anything at, at the end of that sentence clock plate of donuts dot whatever bunny rabbit bunny rabbit thank you so, I mean, as you're sitting there trying to rationally dialogue, yeah. um, also watch how he's functioning, because maybe it's like you need to address that aspect of it so that he can see what he's, how he's functioning. <clears throat> I know it's going to be dangerous because you're getting into <clears throat> essentially very uh, personal touchy, you know, very personal things. I don't know how close you are, but it's like, you know, what, what would it be like, like, if you're talking about materialism and these things and, and you sort of say like, hey, by the way, I've noticed that you have this, you know, uh, often thing where you do, it's just a this or it's just a that. Would you mind sharing with me your history of that in your life? Well, he wouldn't, he doesn't put it that way. I, I, I was only responding sort of dramatically to Pierre's okay. introduction of, of the word rational because, uh, the reason that, that I said you're, you're shipping the line there is because there's a part that, that he would, that my friend would easily stay on that line and, and agree with Pierre. Go, because there's an order to rationalism. He likes order. That's part of why he likes to be a scientist. He likes finding order in, in, in noise. You like, right? But on the other side of the line, he's got another foot that's the uh part. Um, because it's a slippery slope for him into. Uh, uh, who created the order? Who created
created the rationalism, and, who's, and, and rational involves thought, and so you're talking about some big thinker, and for him, that's a, that's the side of the line he doesn't want to go into. That sounds like the counterattack to me. Yeah. Right, but wasn't, when Pierre brought in the word rational, wasn't it, it was after he had linked together a whole bunch of properties going along with algorithm, right? Symmetry, harmony, unity, pattern. Right, 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 right. Right, so I didn't see that you needed to decide that rational meant a creator more than seeing rational as a natural word for describing that list of properties. Right, so like if you, you were like to respond to that, Mr. Grimes? Dr. Grimes? What did you say? He says he doesn't necessarily think that it implies um, especially in the way that more than just order symmetry <clears throat> by itself. No, no, that's not. No? Not that it doesn't imply anything more, but that Pierre put in that word after going through a reflection <clears throat> on a series of properties associated with algorithm, mm -hmm. yeah. which the people you're speaking with would all agree to. That, that's the part on this side of the line, yes. But the right, so, I, so, then, so then jumping to the idea of reason having to, or rational having to refer to a first creator or cause, it wasn't required in that context. If you agreed to this set of properties, wouldn't you agree that you're talking about things that could be discussed with other people and they can agree to the same thing and therefore the kind of thought that you're involved in is rational? It's rational, but yeah, but don't you have to, you know, whenever you talk about something that's rational, that exists in nature that you've discovered, don't you have to ask how it got there? Like what? How it got there. Like, you know, you, you know, Pierre, you've described when they, when they bombard, you know, subatomic particles, they don't get Brownian motion. They don't get random, what we would think of as explosive. What they get are these beautiful, like Mandelbrot, these beautiful patterns, right? And you have to say at some point, well, Yeah. Yeah, there's 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 the geometrical principles, the eternal principles underlying that. And you're and you're seeing the manifestations of it. So you're right, I agree with you. It, you like you find a clock right in the middle of a desert, you wonder how in the world it got there. Because it's order, pattern, symmetry, and balance, and it just didn't appear out of nowhere, so it is natural to think about uh, a source of that. But you're saying that it didn't necessarily include that, and so I, I sort of saw that as well. So, where is this? I'm talking bridge? about the step Jeff made, right? Like, right. Insta people, instead of seeing that word as a natural title for the whole list that Pierre had just gone through, right. and it wasn't just a list; it was a reflection, right? right. Um, it was like Jeff adopted his reductionist other people's viewpoint and just put the kibosh on that rather than seeing that as a natural title to put on that, that language. Because that, okay, the word rational, yeah. so what do you do? So the word rational for Jeff and also for the people he's talking to opens the door to immediately what's the source of the rationality? Well, no, uh, no, or, no, I mean, I think You it, said, how did it get there? Because everything that Ingmar described and Pierre is reflecting on, um, they love that. I'm just saying that um, that's, that's as far as they want to go. Right, because it presupposes how did it get there, like you said. And that's that they don't want to talk about, right. unless it's other earlier scratches, that's it. But are you saying that they don't have to make that well, leap? Well, in terms of Jeff's original question, and I think maybe questions, if we include Barbara's personal uh, addressing of Jeff, uh, the question is, I'd see this as the highest place where we've advanced in terms of dealing with the question. Where would you go with it, Pierre? Like, given that that's rational, can he now help those people around his table? Well, uh, there can be rational, or put it another way, <clears throat> there are different logical systems. That is not to say they are rational. When we use the word rational, why does it go beyond the description of something being logical? 
What are we adding to it when we say irrational? Why don't we just leave it at saying they're a logical system? When you add the word rational to it, what are you adding? Mind, intelligence. Yeah, intelligence. I think Ratios. significance. And beauty. Right? That, that right. there's a significance. A level of significance. Us. What's the significance of it when we say a rational system? Mm. You can see Ratio. intelligence yeah. operating, right? Pardon? In intelligence is operating. It's intelligible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And also, but and you know, so are logical systems. Mm -hmm. Analogical. Mm -hmm. Must, must not logical systems have some degree of intelligence? Yeah, but it's lower. Or are you using it in a higher sense? With being, I think. In the same way. What do we mean by an intelligible system? <coughs> must it go beyond Logic. logical systems? But what's the difference? Well, yeah, yeah, I think so. Well, what are we adding to it that demands that we get out of logical systems and talk about rational or intelligible systems? Uh, mind, mind, beauty, yeah. Yeah. beauty, elegance. Beauty, intelligence. Symmetry, Being, I think. Being symmetry. Too. Symmetry. Yeah. Well, ideals. Well, ideals, right? Like, uh, if you're just in logical systems, you can't deal with things like peace, wisdom, justice, beauty. You have to... You, have, you mean it must include... True. Virtue, truth, yes. Truth. Yeah, that's the one I forgot. It burst out of me. I was just sitting here. <laughs> <laughs> but you can. Well, I, no, I just seemed like that was yeah, something truth. we needed to add to no, the com It's funny because it was in my head, but I didn't repeat it in my list. <laughs> so look here. Turn You're saying justice. it must be more inclusive than merely being logical. Then mm. what more are the essential elements that must be in a rational system that need not be in a logical system? Relevance. So that if we're talking about rational systems, will you and I look to make sure that it has the following things in it, or we might not use the word rational to describe it? Sure. Ah, what are the kinds of things besides mm. what Egmar has just mentioned? Remember? Beauty, right? Peace, like, wisdom. Providence. Self-involvement. Uh, somehow I want to bring the self in there. Sure, it's personal. Uh, well, it's personal. How about that? that? Why do you have to put in the self? Yeah, and Julie's idea. In, in a rational system for it to be intelligible. And perfection. Self. That's interesting. Mm. Because, because, like, because if you follow this line of reasoning, you're out of Descartes. Mm. Jeff, where are you? Jeff's run away. <laughs> <laughs> We're at the best part of the discussion here. I'm listening to every second. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I can hear you in the kitchen. Coffee, coffee. Just the self was brought up. You I here. heard the self. Did this you is, this is getting good. Barbara was raising the question when you were out session. She said, if you include the idea of self, in a rational system, you have to get out of Descartes. Yes. And her point was that unless the evidence of the self can be identified by some line or property mm -hmm. extension, yeah. right, it will or will not then follow that it's part of science. And her position mm -hmm. was that it's likely that there's no such line or property of extension that can define the self. Hmm. And therefore, either the self is not properly an object of science, or we have to redefine science beyond the concept of extension. One or the other. Hmm. Now, she said all of this while you were in there. <laughs> The only problem with so-called materialists is that they have no place for the self. Yes, as the, as the and Mexicans therefore, all they have is a logical system. 
They don't have a rational system without the self. It's well, I was not thinking, rational. Don't they, don't they break it down our brain? Like they, they say we are that, our, our brain. That that's what their answer about the self is, right? That we are our brain. But you can't find any of those qualities in the brain. I want to make Self sure and freedom and, and uh, humanity. Soul. Right, Soul. but they don't care about those. They just reduce consciousness to the brain. Well, then they're in a different system than a rational system. But that's the first thing that Descartes claimed is I exist. And you can't dispute it. I wasn't thinking about Cartesianism. I was thinking about physicalism and, and materialism. Yeah, but a thinker eye is different than a big self, big S self eye, right? I think, therefore I am, is not. It's like ego I thinking. self, therefore I am. I right? am, therefore I think, Pierre says, because that's the way it should be, the other way around. Self I am, therefore I think. <laughs> no, just. Well, self, I was self right? am, therefore I Robin, think. Robin, that what Would you agree? It's either a glaring Wait. contradiction self, or it's therefore thinking. No, 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 come on. <laughs> You're saying that no, Descartes no. got an idea of self, right? Yeah, Descartes said, oh. well, he actually did say that, I am, therefore I think. No, I think, therefore I am. Yeah. No, no, that's the popular view, but that's not really? That's fine. Cogito no, ergo sum. No, that's okay. Cogito, well, take it, take it his way. Ergo sum. I that's am, therefore... me at UCI philosophy. Well, the, the thing is, cogito ergo sum, we know our Latin, right? It's... Look, even if you take I what he said, I, I am, am, therefore I think, therefore the primary property of the self, the I, is thinking. Well, no, right? no, the, 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 uh, the, my, my point is that he claimed that you can't dispute the fact that you exist. Sure. You know, it's the existence that's important. Oh, yeah. and it's the I that exists, which I, I construe as the self. I mean, you can, call it, you can mince words, but... Hmm. So are you calling scratchism rational or logical? Uh, well, it's obviously logical. Well, then, what you're saying, right? Well, I don't. I think the meditations of Descartes are misunderstood. Because okay. they, they, they seem to me to be a work of mysticism. But it seems like you're arguing because therefore I am, right? Whatever that is. You're saying that's, that, that's implicit rational. Yes, it is. But he's logical. Uh, well, it, it's hmm. logical, you know. Is Those two don't fit, logical. right? Well, there is, yeah, there's a very distinct, that, that's why I'm say, saying it seems to me there's a big contradiction in yeah. the system. It goes well, way wait, back yeah. to square one. But how, what kind of contradiction, though? Well, how can you claim that the, this is beyond, uh, indisputable that you, the, that I exist, and and deny this, deny that there is any, um, you know, uh, super materialism. I mean, super. I mean, well, he was a he was a dualist. The card was. I'm guard. That's even oh, worse sorry. than being <laughs> plain old uh, dualist well, materialist. So, Robin, so if you, if, if, you, if you hypothesize the self, as you say Descartes did, and you go through this line of thought and you end up with extension, is that different than a, a progress of thinking that results in peace, wisdom, justice, beauty, perfection? <coughs> well, that's the, the meditations of and, Descartes and, were designed and to if you admit, And if you admit there's a difference, which one would be rational? And which one would include a robust? Wait, wait, wait. One question at a time. Well, you're, I you're, can't keep up going, with you guys. You're, you're, you're going way off in left field as far as I can see because I'm I'm uh, no expert on Descartes, but I did read meditations and they are a yoga. You are supposed to go through them. You're supposed to. It's a. <coughs> it's an activity of meditations of his. Are an activity, and once you do that, your mind is. Enlightened in, in his. Um, I, I agree with you, but I'm not sure you're answering the question. Yeah, he, he, he speaks that way. Well, I say which? yes. I I think a lot of things are subject to gross misinterpretation, and uh, yes, our scientific uh, industrial society has has misunderstood a lot of things, including its very foundation. So it's rational. 
Thanks for reminding me of that, Kevin. I'm sorry, could you answer the question as to whether or not which one would be, uh, or is there a difference between the two that I mentioned? If you end up with the idea of extension through your idea of self, or if you end up with a list of properties, including justice, truth, wisdom, justice, I already mentioned that, peace. I, I, I really don't get how they got um, scientism and materialism out of Descartes. Is, is there a difference, though? Meditation. I don't get it. Is there a difference between those two, though? Yes. That's why I have to answer yes. So then, since you answered yes, which one would be rational? Oh, well, I, I know this is a lead, this is a leading question, a loaded question. Well, hopefully, it's leading to a good place. But go ahead. I, I would say that you you would say the say, I'd say. rational. But I, I, I don't which one? The, the rational. Which Not one? Less, which which logical. extension or oh, the, the other list of properties? The other. Therefore, which one? gets the word self more precisely associated with it. Well, I, the second. But what, what is your point? Well, that, that's important. That's meaningful, right? If you if you got a system that deals with the idea of justice and truth, integrity, ideals like Julie brought up, and you've got one that claims to put the self at the center of its system but only ends up with extension, then... That's an important difference, isn't it? Or is it not? Well, how do you get away from the fact that you can't deny your existence and have any kind of meaningful talk after that? I mean, he made a very strong claim, and I don't think anybody's really counting it. Well, how does that relate to self? <coughs> Does it? Well, yes. But the self what, exists. You, are, you the can't self? deny it. You can't make any kind of talk. That, so that then, how does he end up? Exist. So then, how does he end up with extensionism? Or, right? Extensionism. Yeah. yeah. It's emphasis know. on the word stench. I don't get it either. <laughs> I really don't get it either. I mean, I don't know where they get this. But there's been there's been a lot of mysticists or mystics. Well, that, that have. Uh, <laughs> Been involved in science. I mean, that is so. So, well, so the end result. Well treaded <clears throat> the end result, right? Is uh, I mean, if we want to stick within these systems, is one gave birth to the Parmenides, and Descartes gave birth to what we're calling materialism, right? Science. How do you account for that? It's a bastardization of some kind. I mean, I think they misunderstood. Him. Yeah, but who is the prime bastard? Well, I don't know. Who's the, who, oh, oh, good bumper. Or they're different. very different, right? Likely his followers, <laughs> or I, I, I mean. Yeah, because. But happens. they're very different in that sense, right? There's, I don't know. I don't know. I don't or, see I mean, would you call those the same? I do. I do see that. As, I see a parallel. In, it, okay, in, uh, great. And then, what way are they the same then? Foundations, the, the foundation of uh, the you you have to well I I don't know because uh, when we talk about the one it seems external but when Pierre says well it's self then it's external and it, then it would be the same thing that we're talking about is I didn't understand what you just said well if the foundation of our metaphysics let's call them platonic metaphysics. Uh, is the the one the foundation? Yeah, I mean, when you get to the first hypothesis, okay. I mean, the very fundamental thing um, it, it, we call the one with a capital O. Okay. It could be viewed as the self. Okay. The capital S, or, or, or you, uh, that's the same as Descartes. Uh, well, he's, he calls it I. Go in, it, baby. in what way? <laughs> you it's go. It's a very fun, fundamental, foundational thing. And, but and it, because Descartes, but, to, to because Descartes went through the same rational procedure, 
that Parmenides went through in the first hypothesis? No, did no, you, no, no wait. You're right. Did Descartes do that? No, he didn't. Well, he did go. Nor he did he did make that claim. A rational, quasi-rational. <laughs> yeah, I would say it's quasi. Hey, you can say quasi. I have a snuck that quasi. They're quasi here. the same too. Robin, I have a question. <laughs> if if it is the same, <laughs> in the first hypothesis, how does he begin? What what's his first statement? We're talking like the meditations here. So oh, you know, the Parmenides. Yeah. Well, you don't have to read it. I mean, it just, uh, it's a hypothesis, it's right? A, yes. So it starts out with what? I suppose it's the... Does he start out with if one exists? No. He doesn't start that way. If the one, if the one does not exist. No, if one exists, what follows? Or can it be many? Yeah, you're at the conclusion. She wanted to yes. start where it starts out. The very beginning yeah, of it. Yeah, if the one exists. If the one exists. So yeah. you're starting it's, out with it's, a... It's a hypothesis. Right, so yeah. it's, it's, a, it's taking a if situation, right? You have to suppose it's true as a hypothesis. Right. And, and at the end of your, uh, your reasoning, should be demonstrated. Just because Wh it, whether it or there's a conclusion to it, it reaches some kind of goes through s several steps. Yeah, it's, it's a, pr a proof. I don't know if it's a proof, but it's certainly a certain set of reasoning. Is that is that fair? It starts yes. with a hypothesis, and you have to go through an exploration as to the possibility of this hypothesis. Yes. Is uh, now you mentioned that they may be similar to Descartes. Descartes stated what? Um, I think, therefore, I am, or I am. Well, yes, he, he, he said in his first meditation that you can't deny your existence. So when you say you can't deny, what position is he taking? Is well, it you, you, he, you are, therefore, you think. So is he even considering exploring that idea or seeing it as a possibility, like a hypothesis, or is it that you just simply can't do it? No, I think of it more as a axiom, or a, it's, a, it's a like un, it's unquestioned. More, it's, yeah, it's like a assumed to be true without proof. Without e exploration right. or, or examination. Well, there, the is a, there is a slight examination. Slight? Yes. But wait a minute, oh, what's so the slight? Well, <laughs> <lots of laughs> obviously, it doesn't take much to argue it. It does not take much well, to argue you it. If you hold the position that, that you can't deny it. Frivolous. But well, you you have to, you can't deny, you can't deny you exist, so therefore you must exist. I suppose that's the argument. No, Therefore, like, there's no exploration of the possibility. There it's doesn't just need to be that much. So you, what, what kind of thinking is that, though, if you just say, hey, that's the way it is? It's rational. But that's it, called rational. Well, I... Go, we got somewhere. Well, if you have a... If you have a... Axiomatic, not rational. Well, right. it, I think it, it, I don't... You did say axiom. But well, I'm just going back again to the difference. Like in the beginning of the Parmenides, you have an if statement, right? And you're going to explore the possibility of that. Is that something that Descartes does, that explore the possibility of that which he denies or, or, or says you can't deny? So that's his argument. And, and that I don't think he really, I mean, I, he. Yes or no? Is it a, is, I don't think that was a yes or no question. Right. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> this idea that uh, <clears throat> Descartes, what is it? I think. I think, think therefore I am. So I, don't, co co I think therefore I am. By the way, uh, you call that a very good example of reasoning and logical thinking. I think his whole idea in 
They're called meditations. Because I'm gonna uh, ask it again. They're not. Would you accept that statement as being both rational and logical? Well, the fact that, yes, I, I would say... The reason I'm asking that <laughs> is because would you accept the idea that in logic you start with a premise and you need a middle term and a conclusion, three parts? Yeah. Where are the three parts and I think therefore I am? There's um, no middle class. Well, it's... Tenuous. Nice. Well, what he, I believe he's actually, his actual argument is, is you can't deny the existence. <coughs> no. If there are only Therefore, two statements, you, can it be a logical I am. syllogism? No. No. So therefore, it's not logical. Whoa. No. I guess <laughs> oh. Then it would, I see, what, I so see. if it isn't logical, <laughs> it must be rational. No. no. I don't. What? I don't what? quite get it. <laughs> What? I mean, One more. Could just be illogical. illogical. How about that? Yeah, illogical. Right. And in order <laughs> for it to be understandable, would you agree? One must start out with what is the what is the I that is said to be thinking? Yeah, that's right. a good question. What, what? That's a good question too. Yeah. Well, I, yeah, I, I need an answer. I would. I would. <laughs> I, I, I guess he would say the person who is speaking or writing. Well, uh, I guess the small self, and that isn't that our whole point back there earlier is that he's dealing with the small wait, s. Look, wait a while. Look here. Well, he he has a medita it. meditation, wait, 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 wait. and oh, it's kind of cool. this trance okay, like you were, you were going, self. You, you were yeah, here. Stay with me. Don't break it up. Look here. The statement I think would you agree is only possible if the I has the ability. To grasp something, thinking. Yes, but I, ah, I would say I, like, once again I have I to see. say his his, <coughs> in this, his first claim wait, 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 is look. that I exist. Therefore, I ah, think. Would, Not, would I, you go further and say therefore, if someone were to say I think is fundamental, you <laughs> might raise the question. Uh, must there not be something there that is aware of the thought? For if there wasn't anything aware of the thought, how could the I think, knowing that it thinks? Yeah, I, I agree. I, I, and I, oh. don't, I, I, I uh, don't know how you can escape You agree that. with that? Yes. I, I don't know how you, how you can get away from that. I That's mean, if, if you exist and you're an I or a self, you have a brain that's thinking. Yeah, there has to be some or awareness that, of the thinking for the statement, I think. It's a it's ah, an admission that so. there's a yeah, self. Yeah. The, the, By the way, is that awareness of, uh, a property of the self? Think about it. I don't it. know if it's. Pro I th I think it's a distinguishing. Well, or is there part. just awareness floating around that is not connected with anything? It's not likely. It's not. Yeah. yeah. No. So it must be connected <laughs> with the eye. Yes. Ah. <clears throat> so the eye must have an awareness that there is a thinking. Mm -hmm. Yes. And that must be more fundamental yes. than the thought. Yes. Mm. Ah. Ah. So then the thinking would be merely one of the activities directed from and the basis of awareness. Is that right? Yes. Hmm. Uh, so therefore, to assume that one exists from thinking is only a derivative quality hmm. and not primary, since the primary quality would be awareness, would it not? Yes. Ah. Sure. Hmm. Ah. It's a chicken and egg situation. Ah, uh, so there was like a further shift. And one assumes from that that one is or exists, I am. Right? Mm -hmm. Doesn't awareness itself presuppose existence? Yes. Oh. Babe. 
Maybe well, that's wait a minute. The wait. manager redundant wait. statement is saying, <laughs> "I'm aware. I'm aware." I, I think it. I think the fact that you're aware it changes something. I think it changes something. Oh, uh, wait a minute. It makes Would it you go further and say that when you are aware of some thinking, you must be cognizant. You must be aware, knowingly, of some thought. Yes. Yeah. Like an object. One can be aware of other things other than thoughts. Yeah. yeah. Sounds. Yeah. Music, other other people. Yeah. 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 So then the primary idea behind it must be awareness. By the way, is there any difference between the I and the self? Hmm. <laughs> Uh, I don't. What? It doesn't seem to be in this. Doesn't case. seem to. Be. I don't think so. No. Oh. I don't think there's. Oh. Any so then, when you say, "I am aware of whatever it is," you are asserting the existence of a self, having the property of awareness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ah. By the way. Is the self awareness, or is there a self that has the awareness? That's that's a good question. I yeah, I, I can't see a person being uh, cha not changed by having some kind of self awareness. I mean, it cha right. it seems like it changes them into a different. You, right now, are you not aware? Yeah, no. I'm aware. Of our discussion? Yes. <laughs> Sometimes I'm not. <laughs> yes. Sometimes I'm, I'm uh, oblivious. While you are aware of this discussion, is there any hint of an existence of a self independent of that awareness? I don't think so. No. Oh! Well, then, by the I meaning the self, and the self being the same as awareness, that all you really need to know that one exists or is aware is the self being aware of itself. Hmm. Yes. <laughs> say it again? Yes. Ah, I see. So that's, that's what he must have encountered. Oh. I mean, that's what he must have what? He must have encountered that. I mean, in, <laughs> in order to get to the, he must have, the same Descartes path, must have, he That's must why have, he yeah. said all this, right? Wait, wait, wait. He must have come on, Barbara. Go no, ahead. I don't. I just don't understand how the conclude. You can come to that conclusion and then say, Descartes must have had the same insight. Well, how could you? Because he didn't. It? Well, because he, there's a lot of difference. There's a lot of distance right. between the the conclusion you reached and I am. Therefore, I think, right? There's a lot of distance there. Yeah. If you want to shorten that distance, supply it with some stuff, guy. Oh, yeah, there's no, he doesn't have the awareness. Yeah, that's yeah, right. There. Like that key <laughs> distinction you agreed to, right? <laughs> Everything just changed. Well, he, he does couch all this in just there's kind of part uh, spiritual talk. Are there know? not times when a person does not think? Yes. Then they do not exist. <laughs> well, there you go. I have some students if like one that. stays tightly with Descartes, <laughs> wouldn't that follow? I only exist when I think. So Michael Jordan doing the layup, you know, without thinking about it. Well, this must be a gone. very, very curious fellow who <laughs> reasons in this way. It's nearly logical. It's not consistent. It's not fundamental. It, it'll, it, it leads to an absurdity. Well, the absurdity the being I mean, it's that there can be a mode of existence independent of thinking, and therefore it's not primary. I don't know if you can make all those. Yeah, you I, you've laid it out pretty clearly. I mean, you you've done it. I mean, you've made all these connections. Yep. So, but you have that other question. Why is he so popular then? He said, Pardon? Why is he so popular? Oh, we're taught it.
He's the foundation of my We're trotted. Place. That's why it's popular. Yeah. I don't see how yeah. you can... <laughs> Does everybody agree that people cannot think? Because no one raises their hand and says bullshit. No one says, excuse me, there are plenty of times I don't think, and yet I am. How can you how can you be so foolish and say advance an ocean which on the face of it is absurd? Right. I don't see how it's possible to not think. He's he is taught because he lays the foundation right. for science and, uh, and that's why right. we love him. Nice because we're interested in the technology that follows from science and he starts it with that basic principle that the only thing you have to study is properties of extension. All he needed was one other fellow to pull together science. He said, you know what to do? have to torture nature to force it to give up her secrets. Is That's that, called experiments. Is that bacon? Don't, tr don't use the word torture. Bacon? Yeah. Is that Francis Bacon? Yeah, bacon. Nietzsche? Between those two, then anything that nature divulges has to have the property of extension, and that's all you need for modern science. Now that's why it cannot, it cannot in any way be a science, <laughs> that kind of science is, is in principle incapable of studying the nature of the self. It's clever, it can create many things that you don't need. <laughs> I've got a few. Right? True. Uh, it's in principle dangerous. Yeah. In principle, allows people to have an unbelievable technology that can destroy the earth. In principle and practice. Japan is building, I mean, Russia is building another big atomic installation because they never learned anything from Chernobyl. Yeah, I love technology. <laughs> well, Descartes is blamed for animals. You can get good cups of coffee from it. <laughs> Animal rights people blame Descartes for that. On the basis of what uh, you, that Pierre just said, that uh, you, you, the torture need to reveal. Yeah, the, the, the conclusion is that See, you can check. There's no mind in, in the problem with technology. Animals. Look, at, the real problem is that we lack mythology. What we lack is the, the myth of Prometheus. Mm. We've got the wrong mythology. See, the Promethean <laughs> message is the gods gave man the arts in order to save mankind from labor, to get him out of the cave and allow him to build and create. But see, one of the big things, the art of husbandry so that it can relieve man of the burden of work. We don't, we don't have that myth. The problem we're facing today is only this problem that Prometheus has the answer to. Technology must free man from work. Work is not a proper activity for mankind. Right. Mankind needs leisure for study and art. Well, we got that backwards. We need the myth of Prometheus, so science is trying to get people to work, to create jobs. What an absurd thing to force man to labor. It should be directed to freeing man of labor. <coughs> Well, and if you can't do that, forget it. All it creates is wealth for a few. <coughs> what the hell do you want to support that for? <coughs> End of my long-winded speech. Mr. Coe, we've been listening to you all day.
Hey, Jeff, how do we get into I've, politics? I've been here, been listening, thinking, got some thoughts, but I have nothing to share with you. Ah, man is a spiritual being, <laughs> art and creativity. Well, That's what man about should be into. Now. They've Music, art, philosophy. They, they've redefined the, the hell singularity as that moment when ultra-intelligence right can create itself and therefore the first ultra-intelligent machine will be the last machine mankind ever makes because this technology and science and all these things have come together <laughs> to create this moment when um, when mankind and machines, I guess somewhat merge, but in a way machines supersume all the roles that mankind was supposed to um, be engaged in. They're calling that the new sing technological singularity. <laughs> um, and, and I guess I had a question about that, um, uh, but I forgot what it was. Uh, but it, it just seems interesting that, it just seems to me like unless you're white and you own an SUV, it's not going to really help the world because it's not a worldwide question. The worldwide question is not whether or not we achieve singularity with ultra machines, but whether or not we can save mankind. And um, we need a different kind of thinking for that. And I don't think it comes from science or technology or from, from any of the uh, uh, scientific revolution. It, it, it needs a different, so I'm kind of on a different plane with this whole argument. I don't even buy into it at all. I'm saying we've got a whole different problem here. And um, so it's been an interesting discussion and it was fun listening to, but it's not my problem. <laughs> What's the problem? What's your problem again? What's well, it? I missed it. That, that, I thought I that, understood. That, that it is working. The, yeah. This Cartesian way of thinking is working. That, that we are developing a, 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 a theory, at least, of man without work because of his um, uh, union with machinery. Machinery is now able to self-correct and become, um, you know, that, that all we've gotten from technology is a way for, for technology to to reach perfection, um, and and in some ways supersume all the roles that mankind needs. That man will never need to make another machine. That's how you supersume all the roles, which which leaves mankind kind of in the dust. But it, it seems to me it's only going to work in a world where people can afford super vacuum tube transportation. It's not it's not our world. So well, they don't. Yeah. Okay. I so, see. so I think that the, the the discussion about Descartes and science and and moving forward is a completely different kind of question than the one I have. That's why I don't have much to say. <laughs> but Pierre's introducing the idea that if we had art and philosophy and music, that would take it on. But they don't have that as another as a as a model. Once they've eliminated I all the heard jobs. Much that, I mean, eliminated everybody working, they, they don't have a model to substitute for it. Like, what are you going to do now? That's their comment. I, I, think, I think you're right. I think you're absolutely right. And that it's only going to work in, in, in a very advanced state of society, and most of the world ain't. So I'm wondering we about have a that, though. You're wondering about half the world not having toilets or food to eat? That's, I think that's that not a singularity in my world. I'm not sure. That's not a singularity. That's that's a failed human. That's a failed humanity. Oh. So mm -hmm. I, I'm in a different. So it's a nice discussion. I never really got into it. See, one of the the central problem for today is knowledge. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you if you're following all kinds of political and financial news. We have experts out there who can predict what may take place economically in six months, a year, two years. There are people, therefore, who can take advantage of that knowledge, get the earliest indications of change, and make vast fortunes. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> they realize that with this knowledge that they can make even greater fortunes 
with the collapse of the economy. Yeah. I'm getting that feeling. Now, I follow a whole bunch of these guys who are futurists in the world of economy and politics. There's one thing none of them want to do that we all want them to do. What's that? And say, by the way, if you can predict and take advantage of these potential catastrophes occurring all over the world all the time, why don't you let us know how to avoid them? Right. Yeah. What social and political and economic system can we put in place where we don't have to have these crises and, and collapses which devastate people and cultures? Yeah. They keep that knowledge from us. Mm -hmm. Because if you can predict a collapse, you also know the cause of the collapse. If you know the cause of the collapse, you should let society know that these are the dangers and if you don't fix them, you're going to collapse. Mm -hmm. We're not sharing our knowledge. These people use knowledge to their advantage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of a culture we're in. Mm -hmm because we're not using it to help mankind and ourselves. Mm -hmm. We don't have that from Ethan e. Smith. We have right. A, right. And therefore, there's an investment in this kind of knowledge systems and technological systems that only benefit one thousandth of one percent. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right. What, what myth corresponds with that? And the only rational solution yeah. is that we have to take control of our own knowledge and our institutions to serve mankind, not the few. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah. Absolutely. And people like Descartes, you can put in the trash can. Well, yeah, yeah. Um, if you don't object, if if, if, uh, <laughs> if you're willing to say that uh, his his system is inadequate for the benefit of man. Yeah, because meaningful activity. You know what people want to do. Uh, I know what people want to do. I don't know why. They want to make money. They want to the dance. Yeah, yes. they do. They, they want to sing. Play. Yeah, yeah. I want to sing. They want to be involved in music that can enlighten them. They want to see art that can inspire them. Yeah. They want to get involved in literature and entertainment that's meaningful. Yeah. We're depriving the world of the things we know they need. Why? Why are we so stupid? Uh, I, I, That's our the, problem. You have the yeah, wrong mythology. You're asking a big question. I don't know. Why are we so stupid? Everybody's got an answer to that. Um, we have no place for the door. self. Yeah. Because those would all take yeah, on the self. We have no view of the self. And no view of what it means to be human. Completely. Yeah. A, perfe a perfection of humanity. Yeah. We have individual selves. And the most important that. thing, going back to Parmenides, is that the first hypothesis is about the self. Not about the what. He reasons about the one in order to make points about the nature of the self. We have to have a more profound idea of ourselves in order to justify whatever kinds of changes we're going to make to make the damn place rational. And that presupposes an exceptional and 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 primarily meaningful view of the self to yeah. support what? What we want to do. Yeah, yeah beauty. I, I think homo, uh, homo ludens. <laughs> John Huizinga, he said it. Nature of man is to play. He wants to play. Hmm. Every film is what? Killing. Killing. Ah. Disaster. Fearful. Yeah. No play. There's no element of play in our culture. It's all death and destruction. We gotta reverse it. That's what I hate about our educational system. <clears throat> and therefore, it's all about the world of dreams is meaningful. Like what do dreams are tell us every and every dream? That we're There's integrity in the universe. You have to be part of it. You have to use dreams to share, to see meaning.
change the world in order to conform with you the integrity of your dreams. Mm -hmm. Pierre, um, you know, your criticism of our culture in terms of the death and the killing, is that is it any different in Greek culture? I mean, in terms of their work, I mean, there's all sorts of killing going on in the Iliad. Very graphic descriptions of violence. And, uh, I mean, the major tragedies, you got Oedipus stabbing his eyes out. You got um, <clears throat> his sons killing each other at the same time with the same sword. Yeah, but for same every sword. one of those killings, there's always a reason and a rationality to it. Well, I don't there's see a that, story behind it. And I don't see that to, that's any different than the killing that goes on in our films. For well, the most part. when I see one hero lay down 25 bad guys with a repeater rifle, that's a different kind of killing than you hear described in the Iliad, where every soul gets its due, it goes to hell, and and every 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 encounter has its purpose. Um, it's much more articulate. Well, I heard. Uh, Still, I'd like to hear Pierre's answer. Uh, yeah, Greek, go ahead. Greek tragedy. It was obscene to see a death on stage. Yeah, you weren't allowed. They, they weren't. They could not show a death on stage. Hmm. That's curious. Oh no! I wanted to hear what you were going to say. No, no! Come on, Ed! Come on! Well, <coughs> what is, I don't. The killing and the tragedy and the cinematic Come on! All right, your point is. Well, I find the killing scenes described in the Iliad very entertaining, very well described and graphic and anatomy. anatomical. Um, right, like that's part of our culture is to derive pleasure from seeing violence depicted. And I'm wondering how is that is different it? than what the Greeks were into? See, what is it the Greeks were into? One of the heroes at the Trojan War was Odysseus, not Achilles. Odysseus feigned being sick because he didn't want to go to a crazy war that was absurd. Well, I didn't know that. Well, <laughs> these are the curious kinds of things I recall. Mm -hmm. I read it. I read it somewhere. It's true. The whole war was a mistake. Yep. Yes. According to the Odyssey, that whole war is to teach man the absurdity of war. Mm. Well, we learned fast, didn't we? Uh, Don't include we. After all, you know, war is only one thing. People discover in war a terrible secret that it's easy to kill someone. That's all. Yeah. You got to convince someone that it's easy to kill someone else. It's absurd not to create. Not to communicate, but to kill him. <laughs> That's absurd. You well, say the whole the whole war was was ridiculous. Um, that wasn't your word, but was it really? Was it really just over a woman? Pardon? Was it really just over a woman? Not true. I mean, is, is this really why? I, I, I want to appreciate it. That's, that's why I'm the asking. setting, right? Put it in other words. The origin. I mean, I, I can't imagine going to war because somebody stole someone else's beautiful wife. I can't imagine risking my life for that purpose. And and really, what it comes to, and the and the guys, right? And, and and really, it's ego, right? Is is that what the whole basis of it was? The ridiculousness of. But but see, and the what's interesting about the Iliad is that his response, Achilles' response to that, follows from his teacher, Phoenix. That's what he did. When he gives the story of his life, the model 
the, model, the model of Achilles is Phoenix, his, his teacher, his surrogate parent, the person who brought him up, who is going to be hopefully the heir to his throne in one sense in his old age. It's a story of the passing on of Pathologos. That's the whole story of the Iliad. Well, then one can ask. And that's what, to according to the, uh, the Odyssey, that's what Zeus did. He, cr he created that that conflict so mankind can learn from that the absurdity of the Trojan of the Trojan War. <coughs> Not to glorify it. All of the tragedies or the most of the tragedies in Greek culture come out of the Trojan War, the royal families and what happens to them. It's all disasters. <coughs> Well then, what I guess I don't like about the Iliad then, I'm gonna go for it, Bob. <laughs> what I don't like about the Iliad is, <clears throat> for Achilles to wake up, he had to lose his Patroclus, right? That was the turning point. But you first have to, to understand why he had the problem he had. He didn't make the problem, he inherited it. I, I get that. But at some point he had to wake up to that fact. That's right. And that's why, according to the, the book... What did it take for him to, to see that? Yeah. That he was not thinking, he wasn't awake. He, he didn't see that he was just blindly inheriting a teaching. What did it take? So what you don't like about it is... So what I don't like about it is... Um, there's no Pierre in the story going, Hey, you know, we don't have to all kill each other and lose our best friends or lovers. We can we can sit down and, and kind of you know be a little bit you know use awareness on itself do a little midwifery. That's what's missing from the Iliad. The, from beginning to the end, it's midwifery. Oh, so. <laughs> from beginning <laughs> without a midwife. <laughs> without a midwife is your claim. But, but Pierre, he's saying he's he's missing the midwife. It's not, he's yeah, not, they had to go to war to learn this lesson. Not hey, in the couldn't Iliad. we just do some midwifery instead of going to war and losing Chapter our 11, lovers? look at the, when they're all getting together to try to persuade mm -hmm. Achilles to go to battle. Phoenix's and speech. hear the story of mm -hmm. Phoenix, where he tells him, hey, I'll tell you what the problem you got. I taught you that one. I was fooling around with my dad. Yeah, my past is your present. Yeah. Uh, just to support uh, but Jeff's it point. It would have been yeah. nice if he told him that a little bit earlier. No, 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 no. Just put it there. You can read it. <laughs> Not only that. Jeff, hold on to your point, right? Like, Phoenix says that, but it doesn't... It doesn't have an effect, right? Achilles doesn't give up his problem. Of course way. not. Really? Being told your problem ain't going to solve it. Yeah, I'm being told your problem is not being mid You have to see it's absurd. Is that right? Sorry. Yeah. Sorry, Pierre, what did you just ask? I talked yeah, to what you. did you say, Pierre, just now? It, it, you, have your, to see you have to absurdity. see if your problem's absurd or not. So what did it take for him to see the absurd? Someone could say, hey, I look at my crystal ball and here's your problem. You say, why, thanks. <laughs> so what? Yes. I'm going to act it out. <laughs> <laughs> Knowing it is not going to help me solve it. You already know it, right? You're, right? You already know it. I have to see it personally, the absurdity of it. But you're saying that in the Odyssey, Zeus teaches us the absurdity of this Trojan War. At the end of the eighth book of the Odyssey, the <coughs> Phaeacians, they, they make the great statement, Phaeacian does. He says, hey, you know what? The whole goal of the Trojan War is Zeus is using it to teach mankind. How Keynote says that, huh? I don't yeah. remember that. Damn good book. We don't learn from it though. Yeah. Because we read it as entertainment. 
the, the fifth line of the Iliad goes... We're a great culture. Man, I went and saw a film on Achilles, Trojan War. Magnificent. Oh, all the dress and the, the armament and the way they talk. It's magnificent. By the way, they leave out all the meaning. Yeah. No, better than that, Pierre. We reduce yes, everything yes. to entertainment. Pierre, the very first thing Brad Pitt does, Spank the very Pitt. first thing Brad Pitt does is take a statue of Athena and cut it to pieces. Apollo. I mean, it's like, we're, we're going to destroy all, all, all meaning here. There's no gods involved in this. It's just me, me and these old people no arguing gods. about a girl. <laughs> but it's Apollo, and he justifies that for Apollo being on the side of the Trojans. I thought it was Athena. No, it was the statue of Apollo. Which I just want to point out, completely captures the spirit of the contenders because in that conflict. The, because the, the temple of Athena was the one that was outside the gates of Troy during the... No, uh, Athena was with the, with the Greeks. All right. I mean... Okay, well, I'll have to not watch that movie again. So <laughs> we're, we're like Achilles then. Hmm? We're, we're like Achilles. We think that we know what we're, what's right to do, and we're all angry that uh, we can't get what we want. We've all been robbed. See, why is it? <clears throat> why is it that man can't learn? What keeps man from learning? We have every we we know everything that's going on. We can't take advantage of what we know to benefit ourselves. doesn't want to reflect back on itself, does it? All that knowledge That's doesn't want to true. take into account our responsibility with it. Yeah. Weird. I, I Curious. Think, I think, yeah. though, the problem, well, Pierre, I think a problem is the, the teaching we have about the self, that it's evil. Mm -hmm. That Christian idea, I guess, that if we, I know my students always say, you can't just let people do what they want because why not? Because they'll just, you know, wreck everything. Their, all their desires will come out and they'll think only about themselves and they'll just, you know, that view of man, the savage. I think it's, it was clear in, in Brad's dream in terms of what you're saying. Because Brad in, or, or was in a positive state, and in his history, in his past, he was in a very positive state. And the mother couldn't tolerate that, he hated it, wanted to wipe it out. Why? I don't know, you'd have to ask the mother, but there's something about the natural, the beautiful, that the beliefs that people have in their heads that just annihilate. They don't go together, the natural and the beautiful. So what? Wasn't that your point? No. Oh. I said the natural and the beautiful and the beliefs that, like you mentioned, what did you say? I don't, you said something and it cut, it seemed to. I thought you were saying Brad's mother didn't think that his being natural could be beautiful. Right. She wanted to cut it off. Right. That's right. So she had the same view, that savage idea that he's left to his own expressions, it'll be bad. Right. Yeah. Pierre, I found that, <laughs> I found that quote from the eighth book of the Odyssey. Yeah, what do you got? Well, it says... Tell me why you should grieve so terribly over the Argives and the fall of Troy. That was all God's work, weaving ruin there so it should make a song for men to come. Yeah. But I don't see how that's different than Star Wars. What, 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 what don't you see? I don't see how that's different than an epic like Star Wars. You take fantastic... You don't see that, that that's what it says? Is, diff is altogether different from a, a work of our culture that is highly praised as an Would epic. You read it again. Yeah, read it again. 
It sounds like he's got some intention. For <laughs> to make a song from Star Wars is a space opera, right? It's a song. Not a song. No, Not a. Down. Well, it, uh, you might want to look into what the, he means by a song. Okay, Sorry here's the quote. Okay. Sing. Well, yeah. <clears throat> <clears throat> John Williams has eternal flame and glory for that soundtrack. <clears throat> <clears throat> Odysseus is recalling the war and the, the destruction and the death. Tell me why you grieve so terribly over the archives and the fall of Troy. That was all God's work. Weaving ruin there. Why? So it should make a song for men to come. See, my point is it doesn't say reflect and learn. From what does that mean? A song, uh, he could have said a song for all time. A song that for all time? That would have been more interesting. <coughs> for, uh, than for just men to come because, you know, it, it well, did stay the at the top way. of the chart for 15 weeks. But um, it did it make a lesson for all mankind to, for to, men to come, come? For all time to come. What? For all time yeah. to Are come. you asking about? I mean, I'm asking about any, what, what the purpose of a song for mankind is. Whether it's uh, that there's a great sounds, a, a great story, or is there something to be reflected upon? If, if a song is just a great story, yeah, uh, I've got my shows. But um, no, no, I would agree. It's something to be reflected upon, even though it's not stated. Two broke girls. I'm funny. just saying, I think a movie like Star Wars or the, the, the sextivium of Star Wars is also has that quality. You yeah, can reflect funny. upon it. You can consider the problems. The sextivium? Well, what there's six movies. Sextet. Okay. Sextet, whatever. <laughs> Something like yeah, but okay. So, what is it in in? You got the downfall the of a good Wars. man. What is there in, within Star Wars that gives you a oh, model so for? Yes. Yeah, is there anything in Star Can Wars that allows you to reflect on Star Wars? Yeah. Yeah. In what respect? He's, he's still got his mic. I'm sorry, David. Sorry. Go ahead. I'm just wondering if there's anything within Star Wars that that allows you to reflect you upon Star Wars. Is there a metaphor or, 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 um, or not. Um, it's like an, appointment. an allegory that allows you to get outside yeah. so of the problem and see it as it um, a paradigm rather than okay. as okay. just a series of events? Okay. Yes. I think it's obviously allegorical. <coughs> Oh, no, okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, in what respects an allegory? Like, okay. uh, Let me find I mean, the whole I idea that, a that a republic or a democratic system can transform yeah. into tyrannical, imperial, imperial, yeah. monarchical. Yeah. I mean, there's all yeah. sorts whenever, of whenever you're little ready. lessons, what? at least. Whenever you're ready. Yeah, I'm ready. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, so political to science is one way, way to go work. with it, I guess. I'll put this back. Ah. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Hey, Pierre. Thank pleasure. You. Pleasure. Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you. Pleasure. What Thank were you, you laughing about? Enjoy. About Enjoy. Star Wars. Pleasure. Take care. Pleasure. You start talking Star Wars, pleasure. Pierre's like, yes, I'm yes, out of here. Yes, yes. <laughs> well, it was a question. Oh, See you tomorrow. I think it's a good yes, yes. For me, Gabe, Gerald, Iliad, that I can But I think what Pierre is stressing tomorrow is that word song. And I think it ties into his previous, immediately previous question, which was. Um, why is it that humans can't learn? What's, our, what's, what's the deal? But that quote he's saying is a song, is he reads it as a song for all time, meaning something we can learn from. And that's message to start with. I don't see how that is. I, th I mean, you think you think George Lucas didn't intend for his work of art to be like be like a Beethoven, like something that would last forever? Four men? Four men, right? Four men. The story's about men. Yeah. It appeals to men. So where's the lesson right? in it? Is what I think they're saying. Where's the, lear where's the learning in it? Where's the, is it a, like Joseph Campbell Look, would say, the difference is... where's the lesson in the Iliad? What lesson in the Iliad cannot be paralleled in Star Wars? About who? Achilles? That's Darth Vader. Here's, here's the difference. Anakin Skywalker. Yeah, but, but how, how did the war start in Star Wars? 
through poli political machinations, the emperor. Yeah, you, know, you know the story? I have not read the books, but I have seen the movie. Yes. No, 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 no. All the, the movies, movies are the story. No, no. no they, no, the books, they go the into books, it more books, in the books. The books, uh, from what I understand, the books are branches from the root. No, they, they, the original books actually, uh, I think they were written. They were written anyway, after whatever the, movie, the form. They, what about the story? But the the, the point is, um, um, you asked about the origin of the war, right? Yeah, the origin. Yeah. Of the war. Right. It was emperor. It was the Palpatine guy. He was, and and, and the failings within men that allowed them to be manipulated by him in order to bring it about right there the right the the weaknesses of the senate right and the and the, the various star systems and uh the greed of the uh of the spacing guild no i don't even know if that's what they're called but the a particular right if you watch the first movie and there's this really but what are the, what, but they're into economics they're into they're so into finance multiple, right? multiple. so you're, you're making a good point it's, it's, got, it's, it's depicting multiple failings uh, can you but do each of those have a cause or can they be boiled down to a single cause uh, let's say let's take either one make your point I think the Iliad. I would. I would venture a guess to say that what they're saying is, um, you could take all these various causes that are being depicted in Star Wars, and boil it down to Achilles taking a less, uh, taking a learning from Phoenix and not, and, and his mind. He's not awake. He's not. He's not questioning it. Now, I like you could, that. You could take I like that. that. So I like that point. Cause. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like right there at the center, the eleventh book, Phoenix, and it's made a central. It. Well, yeah, that's Theme. Peter's point, but right. But you could now put that in Star Wars and say, well, yeah, you could make the same point that's doing with the Achilles and Phoenix with every single one of those. Everybody in the Senate, everybody, you know, they all have the same. They've taken on a learning. Yeah, maybe and there to, isn't a parallel for that Phoenix scene with Star Wars. No, no, no. But, but if we were going to play with it, we could. Right. Exactly. Here, I'm going to put this back on David's shelf. <laughs>